In this video, we're going to talk about O-rings. O-rings are a kind of seal, perhaps the most common kind of seal. And as you can see here, they are a circular shape. Uh, they come in a variety of sizes and different materials. <clears throat> and we'll take a look at some of those here in McMaster. Um, O-rings are uh, often defined, at least their geometry, is defined by what's called a dash number. And a dash number is an industry standard specific to O-rings that is used to define an O-rings geometry. And there are quite a few dash numbers here. We start at one and scroll down here, go all the way down to 932. Now you'll notice that they're not consecutive. For example, we jump from 920 to 924. To be honest, I don't know why that is. But uh, regardless, there are quite a few different O-ring dash numbers. And each one of these dash numbers represents a very specific set of geometry that defines the O-ring's shape and size. Um, let's click on 003 arbitrarily and take a look at uh, some of these O-rings here. So we see 003, 003, 003, 003, 003. So these are all dash, uh, all 003 dash numbers, and you'll notice that they all have the same dimensions: 1 16th, 1 16th, 1 16th, and the IDOD, that is the inner diameter, outer diameter of the O-ring, 1 16th and 3 16th. Same thing up here: 1 16th, 3 16th, and same thing up here. And if, I guess there are a few more down here. If we scroll down, all the same. Um, something else you'll notice is that there is a fractional IDOD and an actual IDOD. And if you're good with fractions, you'll notice that the actual ID uh, differs from the fractional ID. And same thing for the actual versus fractional OD. Uh, the, the fractional values given are more like estimates. And uh, the actual values are, as the name implies, the actual values. So when you are uh, designing something, you want to tip, pay close attention to the actual value here. Uh, something else to take a look at is the durometer. A durometer is a measure of um, uh, hardness that's applied to O-rings, but more generally speaking, that's applied, uh, applied to rubber or soft um, like silicone type materials. Um, there are a few different scales and we won't get into that too much, but the A, the Shore A, it's called Shore, S-H-O-R-E. Uh, the Shore A scale is, is probably the most common one. So 70A is kind of like, uh, I think that's something like an eraser, uh, the eraser material on a, a lead pencil, something like that. There are scales that you can look at to uh, um, get a better understanding for how the short number corresponds to the material's hardness. Uh, but um, uh, the lower the number, the softer the material. So down here we have a short 9090A, and that's a pretty firm, uh, pretty firm O-ring material. Down here we got 65, um, yeah, 65, 70. Anyway, that's just one more specification that you can look at when you're designing uh, with O-rings. So moving on, um, there are, let's see, we've, we've got two types of O-ring seals shown here. One is a radial seal and one is a face seal. And these are two very common types of O-ring seals. So um, the radial seal, as the name implies, seals uh, around or uh, in a radial direction or uh, seals the circumference of uh, of an assembly so when you see this dashed line right here that that represents a center line and you can imagine that uh, the the shape that's shown here this 2d shape is revolved 360 degrees um, or 180 degrees since they're we're, we're showing the top and the bottom profile there but uh, if that was revolved all the way around um, there would be a cylinder so this represents the wall thickness of uh, one side of that cylinder and down here represents the, the, the wall thickness of the other side of that cylinder. And inside you have your O-ring. So we're seeing a cross section of the O-ring right here. 
Same thing down here. Now this is shown in kind of a, a square profile with kind of a, like a bulbous top. Uh, we don't need to pay too much uh, attention to that. Just uh, O-rings are, are usually round. So uh, in fact, here's a good example right here. The cross section of an O-ring is typically round like that. But there are uh, square O-rings as well. Um, but we're going to kind of concentrate on what's a little bit more typical, which is the, the round O-rings. Oh, where did, my, where did my image go now? I've lost it. Okay, so a radial seal is one common type of uh, sealing application for an O-ring. Uh, in this application, uh, it, there's some kind of plunger in here, it looks like, with the O-ring wrapped around it and that o-ring seals uh, between the plunger and the the in, inner wall of whatever this canister or cylinder is um, you might use that in like some kind of pump application so this plunger looks like it can move back and forth and because of the o-ring creating a seal it won't let any uh, fluid or liquid um, get past that seal uh, another type is a face seal, which is shown over here on the right side. Uh, so same thing, imagine that this, this profile is revolved all the way around. Uh, and so the, the profile that the shape we're seeing right here is a cross section of the O-ring. This is the other side of that same O-ring. Again, this one is shown square, but more often than not, an O-ring cross section is, is round. Um, and that o-ring would sit in a groove here and you'd have a plate that comes on top of it and that plate would get screwed on very tightly with some screws all the way around the circumference of the plate and uh, it, it would create a seal between the o-ring and the plate itself now this this particular image doesn't show us what we're sealing but you know maybe there's maybe there's a hole on the inside and uh, there's uh, some fluid in it and there's pressure in that hole that would cause the fluid to leak out of this interface were it not for our o-ring seal i don't know what the application is but uh, the, since there's an o-ring there you can see assume that they are sealing it for some purpose or another now this is just kind of an educational illustration so that's probably why they're not showing exactly what they're sealing but don't 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 be confused if you look at this and say well why what are they sealing i don't see anything it's just a educational illustration okay uh so let's see um here here's an example let's see if i asked you what type of seal is this what would be your response we just looked at two different types of o-ring seals so which of the two would this one be if you said radial you are correct this is what uh a radial seal looks like in real life. Now this particular one has two O-rings. That's not always the case. Oftentimes there is just one O-ring, but this particular one has two. So that's uh, an example of a real part where they have a radial O-ring seal integrated. And uh, this one here we'll look at um, kind of a giveaway since we already talked about the radial seal, but which uh, what style of O-ring seal would this represent? If you said flat seal, you are correct. Now, here's the O-ring right here. And in, in the uh, illustration we looked at, there was just a flat plate on top of it. Well, in this real world example, this, uh, this, this hex um, nut feature takes the place of that, that plate. And uh, the, uh, the O-ring itself would, would uh, seal up against for example, if we look at this part right here. So that O-ring we looked at, which was this picture here. So this O-ring right here um, might seal against this uh, flat face down here. Now I'm not saying that this part, this exact part right here is, is supposed to mate with this one. The geometry doesn't quite look right to do so. Uh, looks like the, the major thread diameter of this part is probably too big for the hole that's right here. But in general, that is the type of interface you might see where you know this O-ring uh, seals off against a flat face over here. And uh, you know, maybe the, the maybe there are some some female threads in this bore right here, and you, you thread this um, uh, stud into the female threaded hole right here, 
And once you get all the way down, your O-ring seals against this face. And now you have a nice, nice tight O-ring seal. So that's O-rings. They are used for sealing applications. They're very, very common. They're very, very cheap. And uh, they work very well. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.